بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we will speak about one of the most important relations in life. This relation is so strong that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the relation between the believers with it. In this world and in the hereafter. This relation is the relation of brotherhood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the believers in this world Verily, all the believers are brothers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them in the hereafter as well We have removed every heart feeling from their hearts They are brothers on top or laying or sitting in front of each other That is in the hereafter so the concept of having a brother, this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah Almighty said to Musa alayhi salam and we have gifted him from us a brother that is Harun alayhi salam as a brother the uh, word brother is used for different meanings there is an original use in Arabic and there is a metaphoric use in the language the original use, there are four brothers that you have in life, not only one. One type of brother or four? How many types of brother do you have? Only one. Most people recognize only one. Some of them recognize two or three. There are four types of brothers in Islam. The first one, the brother who is the full brother from the same father and mother. There is the brother from one side only, from the father's side and from the mother's side. So these are three. And finally, you have your brother from fostering, from breastfeeding. All of them are considered brothers in Islam. There are different rules regarding uh, them. The rest, the perfect, for example, brother in Islam, and you have the brother in humanity. There are many other uses as well. Now, usually in the Holy Quran, the relation between any group, any place, is that of brotherhood because this is one of the strongest relation in life so when Allah Almighty mentioned the believers he says brethren when he mentioned the disbelievers they say they are brethren when he mentioned the hypocrites they are brethren as well now Allah Almighty mentioned each pro prophet and messenger when he addressed his people and he said to his brothers that is the his, his family his groups not only the direct brother that is his nation and so on now what are, what are the, the, your duties towards your brothers? What is the status of brother in Islam? There are many. It can be summarized in one single word. One of the shortest word in Arabic. Two letters only. And that is Bir. The concept of Bir is very important in Islam. In fact, the whole of the religion of Islam can be summarized with Bir. That is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, mentioned, this is one of the most beautiful verses in the Holy Quran. And in my opinion, this is the verse in the Holy Quran that summarizes the full Islam. Allah Almighty speaks about the concept of bir. Bir initially is a word that is comprehensive of everything that is good. Every kind of righteousness, good deeds, and good behaviors and etiquettes. That is bir. It's a beautiful word, very generic. So Allah Almighty says in this verse, it is not righteousness, not bir, that you turn your faces to the right or to the left, the direction of your qibla, whether it is to Sham or to Kaaba in Mecca, wherever it might be, in your prayer. That is not the concept, that is not the essence of righteousness. But righteousness is, bir is, then Allah Almighty mentions the belief system, believe in Allah Almighty and the angels and the books and the, then Allah Almighty mentions good deeds to people around you many things especially giving to your relatives start with your relatives and then the needy and the orphans and so on then Allah Almighty mentions the most important pillars of Islam after that which is Salah and Zakah and so on then Allah Almighty mentions personal qualities and etiquettes being strong and patient and, 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 uh, and steadfast and just at difficult times and so on. 
Allah Almighty at the end of the verse, he says, those are the righteous ones. Those are the ones who are true in their birr, in their righteousness. And those are the truly God-fearing. So as you see, one single verse encompasses all. The concept of belief, the concept of uh, Islam, the practical religion, and the, your relation with other people, and your good qualities as well. So birr, if you want to summarize your relation with your brother, it should be that of birr. What does it mean? It means good behaviors, good etiquettes, and good morals and practices with him. Reaching out for him with everything that is good. Simple. So that is the concept of birr. Is it clear? This is mentioned in your relation with your brothers and sisters, with your parents, with people around you, between the believers, and as in this verse, the full of Islam, including the belief system has to be based on birr, and your relationship with people has to be based on birr. Clear? Now, to give it more details, okay, birr is a very generic word, so give us more details. So we can summarize or, uh, the concept of birr towards your brother in three points. The first point, asking about him and his families and his children. Check up on them. Because many times people are in difficulties or in need or in distress or have good occasions or bad occasions, but you are not aware. So you need to check up on them, to check, make sure that all is well. So this is the first part. The second one, visiting them. Trying to get to know them better and to love them and to love you back. So your family and their families should understand each other and so on. So reaching out and feeling the love and compassion between you and seeding that and nourishing that as well. Second. The third one is sharing with him his good time and bad time. During good time, share the happiness. During good time, share the grief by helping him and facilitating for him passing from that. Is it clear? So three points. This is the summary. We'll give a little more details. In Islam, the bigger brother, the big brother has an important status. That status is similar to that of a father. The Messenger وسلم, said in the hadith, he is not truly one of us, one of the Muslims, who does not honor our elder. So if the ruling in Islam is that you need to honor everyone who is older than you, even if he is a total stranger, what about someone who is your direct sibling? Obviously, he has that right. On the other hand, it is the right of the younger brother to deal with him mercifully and with compassion. The Messenger وسلم, said in the same hadith, and he is not one of us, not truly Muslim, the one who does not treat our younger with mercy. Deal with him mercy. Usually the problem between the siblings arises from every one of them is seeking 100% justice. Or more usually. Not only justice, more. That is not how family life works. In family life, there should be, it should be based on compassion and love and mercy. Whatever it might be. So among the brothers, this is also important. After that, it is important to help him and support him if he is in need. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the hand that is better and higher in status in the sight of Allah Almighty is the hand that gives, not the hand that takes. The hand that gives. Okay, fine. So if you are helping and supporting, you will be beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Great. But the Messenger Sallallahu explained. He says, so start with whom? Start with your mother and your father and your sister and your brother. Subhanallah. He's not speaking about just simply if he is in need or if he is poor. No, that is one of the best charity you can give in life. One of the best charities you can give in life is given to whom? To your father and mother and to your brother and sister. True. Allah Almighty said this in the Holy Quran. They ask you what to spend from any goodness. What to spend? What? They are asking about what? Allah Almighty did not answer what. He answered a different question. This is in Arabic, a beautiful form of speech in Arabic called the answer of the wise or the wise answer. 
somebody is asking about something that is irrelevant to him or useless to him so you answer him with something that is important to him and beneficial to him this is called what the wise answer or the answer of the wise it happens a lot when is the exam for example the exam when are you going to uh, test me or try me Say, are you prepared did you finish the memorization that is more important than when the exam will. are you ready so if you are ready it doesn't make a difference whether it is now or tomorrow so here they are asking what to spend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whatever you spend from goodness means is good no whatever you spend from any goodness then to the parents and the relatives and the orphans and the needy subhanallah so the parents and the relatives even if they are not orphan not needy has a priority in islam see how much we are not understanding the religion correctly and seeing many cases coming to us there is a problem between the brothers and the siblings and the family members because of some financial issue doesn't make a difference this is total misunderstanding of the question if in the Holy Quran Allah Almighty guide us that if somebody is unable to pay back the debt then relieving him wait for him first wait for him give him more time as much as he needs until he is able to pay then Allah Almighty says but if you will do charity it is better for you you do charity means you relieve him from the debt altogether so you are unable to pay don't worry that's it it's a charity upon you so if this is the case regarding anybody on earth what about your own sibling something is totally amiss here you need to be careful and understand the religion correctly and understand the relations correctly that is your own blood your own flesh and he is important for you in this world he is also important in the hereafter one of the most important rahim relations blood relation in islam immediately coming after the father and mother so you need to understand so that is why the messenger sallallahu mentioned this so if you are giving any charity if you are providing anyone if you are helping anyone your hand you are in a higher place in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with then he mentioned these four and then those after him next after that is giving him sincere advice giving him consult with him and give him sincere advice the message of sallallahu says in the hayat when one of your brothers is seeking for advice then give him a sincere advice give him an advice that is helpful it might be strange usually you need the messenger sallallahu said in the hadith the religion revolves around giving good advice the whole religion giving advice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this need a little explanation no time to explain it now to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam to those who are in authority among the Muslims and then to every Muslim to the public this is what we call nowadays is being active in the society you see something wrong report it you have a good idea a suggestion give it to somebody do not wait if you have a good advice to anybody share it with people so that is the concept here, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he is asking advice, do not be little it. Uh, uh, I don't know, just manage it. So I say, what do I do about the study or the future of my child? Uh, well, I don't know, now it's, uh, this is very difficult. And no, do your best to try to research and help him and give him a good advice. Do not think that it's not part of your duty. This is part of your duty. Somebody is seeking your consultation, seeking your advice. This is what you do. Abdullah bin Mubarak, one of the most important figures uh, in Islam, he said he was asked what is the best that a man can have in this world he says a wise instinct a mind that is thoughtful and that is wise naturally he does not need to strain himself to come up with a good idea it just comes naturally there are some people who are wise by nature mindful by nature yeah there are very few but he says this is the best of course because if you have a wise and good mind you will be able to make good decisions and thus you will be successful in life in, uh, in every uh, point great alhamdulillah he says if somebody does not have it then what when he was asked this he said the second thing is to have good etiquette now, if you are good with people you have good morals and etiquette they will love you so they will be ready to help you and support you and advise you and this will be good for you as well great alhamdulillah says if not he said then to have a compassionate brother to consult with him when you have a good relation with your brother 
So you'll feel free to open up for him and ask him and consult him about anything. And thus he will give you a good consultation and this way you will be successful in life. True. They say, it, and if not, you do not have a brother or you do not have a brother that is so close to you or you cannot consult with him or you didn't consult with him. He says, then a permanent silent or a long silent. Don't speak. Because if you are not wise, and you do not have good etiquette, and you do not have anybody to consult with, so obviously whatever decision you make is going to be a disaster. It's not good for you. Whatever you are going to say, most likely is going to be a disaster. So remain silent. This way you will protect yourself from harm, and you will protect people from your wrong ideas and your wrong speech. They said, and if not, he said, then a quick death. At least you will be relieved from what do you have in this life. So the idea is where he put the brother. That is, and he mentioned two criteria. He should be compassionate, that brother, and you can consult with him. And this is true. Next after that is gift. And many people are ignoring this. Gift is different from giving or spending. Many people do not understand this on all relations. So I see some family problems that are referred to me and many of them the wife or some family member are accusing him that he does not, for example, care, he does not give gifts and so on. And when the husband comes with list of all the expenses, he has ex spent so much upon the family. Yes, but none of them was in the form of a gift, so they are not the same. It's true. The gift is totally different. It has a different feeling, no matter what. It's not about the price or the quantity. The whole idea is about the feeling. So uh, that is why the Messenger of Allah said, say, give gifts to each other and you will love each other. It is what instill love. So gifts between the brothers is something that is important you pay attention to. Now, uh, we have the story of Umar radiallahu The Messenger of Allah gave him a gift and he was unable to use it. So he was thinking, to whom should I give it? And then eventually Umar radiallahu gave it to his brother who was in Mecca at the time and not a Muslim. I was thinking, the best person who deserves this gift is my brother. And he sent it to his brother. So the, the concept was practiced by the Sahaba early on. Even to the Sahaba, the, the, the brother, even if you do not share with him everything. He is still your brother. He is still close. He is still part of Al-Arham. Now, uh, next after that, and probably the biggest form of bear to your brother. The biggest is to love for him what you love for yourself. Siblings usually, they have this form of uh, competition between them, naturally, from early on. And this usually goes on and continue. Generally, this is something that if it is guided, it is a positive thing because it's encouraging every one of them to, get, to become the best version of himself. So that is, in general, this is something that is healthy. But to an extent, here the Messenger وسلم, is guiding us to something totally different, which is the feeling. You should love for a brother what you love for yourself. This is very easy to say, very difficult to do. Loving for him what you love for yourself. That element was expressed by the action of one of the figures in history, said by the scholars that there is no person on earth who has done a great favor to his brother than Musa alayhi salam to his brother Harun. None, it doesn't exist. The main reason, when Allah Almighty ordered Musa alayhi salam, this is linked with the next one, by the way, which is, the brother is your help and support. The most trustworthy and dependable person on earth for you is your brother. Even if you have an enmity or hatred. When a brother usually in a difficult situation, the natural instinct kicks in. So the brothers could fight, but if a stranger comes or some difficult situation, they will unite automatically. If they don't, there is something seriously difficult. We have few cases that are beyond the norm. But in general, this is the case. So here when Allah Almighty obligated Musa alayhi salam, go and advise Pharaoh. Call Pharaoh to obey Allah Almighty. Pharaoh, the biggest tyrant in history. The biggest tyrant in history. So at that time, Musa alayhi salam pleaded to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send with him a support and help. Send with me my brother Harun. So that he will support me. 
because he's better at addressing people, better in speech. It's something very important. Mentioning the quality of other people, one of the essence of all the prophets and messengers. One of the beautiful etiquettes. And this is the etiquette of winners all over the world. Usually winners, this is what they do. Leaders, this is what they do. So we need to learn it. We need to teach it to our children as well. So he mentioned, he's better. Musa alayhi salam, the one who speaks with Allah Almighty himself. Allah Almighty speaks with him directly. Musa alayhi salam, one of the most important prophets and messengers of all time. Comes usually at number three. So after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam. That is asking Allah Almighty to help him and support him with Harun, who was not a prophet and messenger at that time. It's not only person, but he's my brother. Send him with me. But he did another dua. He says, and make him a partner with me in my affair. What is your affair? Being a messenger from Allah Almighty, prophet and messenger. So Allah Almighty promised him, he says, we will strengthen you with your brother. That is Harun alayhi salam. And then Allah Almighty sent Harun alayhi salam with Musa alayhi salam together, but he sent them both as prophets and messengers. So Harun alayhi salam became a prophet and a messenger because of the dua of Musa alayhi salam. It doesn't mean that becoming a prophet and messenger is attainable only by the dua or by dua. No, it's a choice by Allah Almighty. But that was only one of the causes or in the course of the speech. But when Allah Almighty mentioned it to us, he is reminding us, making dua for your brother is something very important. Many people are not paying attention to that. Making dua for him, for the goodness, whatever you like, whatever you get in life, whenever you have any opportunity, business opportunity or otherwise, remember your brother. So always try to share with him and make him share your success and, and good stories as well as the challenges that are facing you. The dua for the brothers, there are two types of dua. The dua that is mentioned usually Whenever you are making any dua, include your brother in the dua that you are making for yourself. Musa alayhi salam, when he was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that, he says, Oh Allah Almighty, forgive me and forgive my brother. And have mercy upon me and him. Whenever he is making a dua, he is including with him who? His brother. We rarely remember this. Rarely. Many people, alhamdulillah, remember to pray for themselves. Few are also remembering to pray for their parents and their families and their children. Great. But much fewer are those who are praying for their brothers and sisters and their siblings and so on. So you need to pay attention to this concept as Allah Almighty is teaching us from the action of Musa alayhi salam. The next type of dua is dua from behind. Not only in front of him. Whenever you meet him, whenever you are departing, making dua for him. No, but also make dua when you are alone with Allah Almighty. The Messenger وسلم, say the dua from a brother for his Muslim brothers in secret is answered by Allah Almighty. That is why many of the scholars they used to say that whenever we have any need from Allah Almighty, we'll pray to somebody who needs it. One of my brothers, I'll check somebody who needs the same thing. I'll pray for him. Why? Because of the end of this hadith. In that hadith, the Messenger وسلم, said, Allah Almighty appoints an angel with him. Whenever he is making that dua for his brother in secret, the angel will say, Ameen, and for you the same. So he's praying for you. So they remember. So, okay, fine. So they say, whenever we are making this dua, Allah Almighty will give me what I wanted. So he didn't pray for himself, but he prayed for some hand. This beautiful relation and connection is something that we need uh, in life. Final point is how to strengthen the relation between the siblings. There are many points, but we will summarize it in five points. The uh, first and foremost, be a role model yourself. Your relation within the family, and the elder brothers as well, how they are dealing with each other, how the parents are dealing, because the children usually imitate. Simple. So they will learn by, by model. The second thing after that, educate them about the religious points, about the importance of a brother. So they will understand the, the status of a brother in Islam, how important it is, and how to deal correctly with their brothers. The next after that is treat them equally. Do not favor one of them openly. This is one of the biggest mistakes that many people do. We should remember the story of Yusuf alayhi salam with his brothers. But with his brothers. There is a lesson in it, or many lessons in it, but there is no time to elaborate. The concept, deal with them 
equally. If you need to favor one of them for a good reason, explain it to the rest. If you have favored one of them before and now you are favoring the other, but that one probably has forgotten. So tell them, because last time I did this for you. When you graduated, I did this for you, and so on. So they will understand that you are treating them fairly, all of them. This is something very important so that they will not have hard feeling towards each other. The child does not have the courage usually to hate his father or mother, or to openly criticize him. So he will start criticizing who? The one who is favorite. And that will create enmity between them. And this is something that you need to realize as well. Uh, also teach them to tolerate each other. Deal with each other with tolerance. Now we are in the year of tolerance, by the way. This is something important because as we said, usually when there is a dispute, each one of them is seeking justice or more than justice. You need to teach them that is, this is not the way to deal with the family. In family, we need to deal with tolerance, forgiveness. It's not about who did what and how to punish him and how to get your full right from him. But about the importance of how important and beautiful it is to forgive for the sake of Allah Almighty and because he is your uh, relative. And final point, teach them practically by letting them cooperate. Let them do, do group things. Not each one of them is playing alone or each one of them doing something separately. Teach them to play and and, and, and cooperate and work together. This will create stronger bond between them. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clear our hearts from any hard feelings toward any of our relatives or any Muslim or any person on earth. We pray to Allah Almighty to purify our hearts and our actions and our deeds. We pray to Allah Almighty to instill in our hearts the love for our brothers and sisters and our relatives and all Muslims on earth. We pray to Allah Almighty to uh, guide us to his divine truth, make us good for ourselves, our families and everyone around us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa صحبه أجمعين